Good day, Kadena Hash community. Thank you so much for your support in the first video. I hope you enjoyed the better sound quality today throughout and a much smilier voice from me today. Another community member made up a little cheat sheet for some of the project info, so please have a look. As I've said, I'm creating these videos for the Kadena Hashing community, but lots of value for anyone looking into investing into KDA. Uh, and in the case of Zelcor, many other chains are supported. The wallet is almost a hybrid of a hot and cold wallet. A little longer video and a lot to go through with Zelcor wallet. This is a far more robust wallet, but with that comes complexity. I hope you enjoy the detail I share with you, and hopefully it saves you quite a bit of time when you're maneuvering this wallet yourself. Lastly, please like and subscribe, and don't forget, this isn't financial advice. This is simply a how-to, and the next steps and choices you make are all up to you. Let's get right to it. The install process is pretty straightforward. Cellcore.io, we'll do the Windows install. I'll let you kind of watch this go. For this one, we're going to go through a couple of things during the during the setup process, as well as uh, some security things. Once we get into the uh, wallet itself, I'm going to go through buying on um, an exchange, as well as swapping from a MetaMask uh, coin of sorts that you might have there over to the the Zelcor wallet and how you can go about doing that as well as even how to buy on fiat so it'll go through all those ways of getting money in there depending on how you're going to want to buy into the the Kadena hashing project you'll have those options available to you okay now into the setup but before we go any further as you'll see this little at a glance is kind of a neat little feature that they've uh, put in there gives you really up-to-date information uh, about all kinds of different things crypto related so quite a nice resource there other than that, you've got your login, sync and register. Syncing if you're obviously going to be pulling a wallet you've already got, and then registering. The usual stuff, put in your username your, and then your password. You're going to want to make sure obviously it's very strong. You're definitely going to want to create a backup for it, put it in a safe, however you want to take care of that, but just make sure it's safe. The credentials are not used to generate your wallet uh, encryption, which is kind of cool. Both your username and password are case sensitive. Your information is never sent to anywhere. It's actually stored on your computer, which is kind of neat, so it doesn't hit the internet. Um, you're going to want to do this mechanic right here as well. So sync. You're going to select up to three questions. Uh, you can choose as many as you want. You just have to choose three. Um, and if somebody knows you really well, be careful of the questions you're using, or if your information's public, I guess, whatever. Um, so we're just going to put in some fake ones here. This is basically a test account to show you guys how things go. So uh, I grew up in Timbuktu, and what else are we going to pick today? Uh, where did I meet my spouse? Well, I'll make it pretty general. It's Canada. Uh, I'm Canadian, and so is she. And uh, what else do I want to do? Favorite vacation place. Um, again, I'm not going to give you my real one, but anywhere but here. I do love getting away. I do love where I am, but I like getting away. All right, so we're going to register the account, double checking your information there, also asking you and reminding you to make sure you have it backed up. And once you've done that, you have to click that yes and then sync. Okay, so we're just going to log in here. When you first log in, there's going to be a little splash screen that comes up if it's your first time. This goes through the decentralized two-factor authentication. This is kind of a little extra piece of security. It, you basically have a code we'll go through in a little bit. You do need Flux in order to activate this feature, but the Flux actually gets loaded onto your wallet proactively. It doesn't show up right the second you log in, but very, very soon afterwards. Okay, so we'll close this out and it'll bring us into the wallet. As you can see, lots of information here. The first little bit is some coins uh, that are pre-set inside there. Uh, inside Manage Assets, you can add more. On the left, these are a bunch of wallets that you can use and organize your funds if you'd like to. In here, there's, again, Add Assets. Smartify will allow you to clean up your portfolio, I guess, if there's stuff you don't want in there. And uh, if you do want it in there, because you want to see what you've done well or not done well with, or what coins have gone nowhere. Um, and then over on the side, there's a little menu. The exchange, there's some pretty neat stuff here. The quick swap is the main thing I can see being used. It does allow you to swap, and it seems to be even within chains. Uh, that you can do that which is kind of neat you see now we actually have flux in our wallet you can hide any of the ones that have a zero balance and see that that one has a balance when you click on the different tokens uh, you actually get to see quite a bit of details 
It'll show you the chain, uh, lots of info you can gather from any of this. How long you want to look at the coin o or the coin of the token over and see what's how it's played. The news specific to that one, uh, like what we saw at the start. So uh, pretty in depth, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I can't. I must say it's quite a, a robust uh, wallet. We'll use some of these things later on. And back to our portfolio. And over to the uh, security. Let's take a look at the Zelle ID. So once you click in here, you're going to see a few different things, but the D2FA is what you want. Create or change. You'll enter in a PIN for yourself. And then obviously, again, make sure you remember it. It's used for logging in. It's used for doing transactions, almost like your, your hard wallets uh, let you put in a code, or you have to put in a code to unlock them. Just put in your password to authenticate what you're doing. And as you can see, it gives you notices up top, which is pretty cool as to when things happen and what's happening. All right, now for some fun stuff. We're going to add an asset to our, man, to our wallet. We're going to add BUSD. So we'll go in here, click on Add Asset. And we're going to choose the latest one, uh, not the Ethereum one, which is the first one, uh, the last one, which is BEP20. And we're going to add that in. Then we're going to take a little closer look at it. This is just a little added security to make sure we don't send something in the wrong place. So we're going to go uh, show detail or show zeros, click on this one, and then we're going to actually go take a look at it on the um, BSC scan. As you can see, there's a contract ID there. We're going to match that up with our MetaMask wallet. That way we know we're sending the right one. So when you click on BUSD, go on to there and view asset and ex or sorry turn token details and you can see the addresses match so now we're going to go back over to our zelcor wallet we're going to copy the address where we want to send the funds to so we're going to receive funds copy that you can click there or you can click on the address portion and it says it's been copied when you go back over here now we can hit send put in our address that we've just copied and then to put in ten dollars and next just double check the address obviously and whatnot and there she goes a little bit of gas of course hit confirm and away she goes doesn't take too long uh, it'll finish up in a second here you could speed up if you were in a hurry but no point in spending the extra money right now so I'm just gonna click on it And there it is. Lost a penny. So going to be a few losses as we do some of this stuff, but it's just to give you a good idea of what's going on. So now if you wanted to buy it with fiat, so you can actually click on that Eve thing on the left there. Um, or you can click on the little, the fourth, our fifth menu item, purchase. There'll be some KYC in here and stuff, or just keying in details because you're using a credit card to do it. I'm not going to go through the full entire process, but you can get the idea by most of this. Buy whatever you want. BUSD again for fun. You have to agree with the disclaimer to move forward. Choose the wallet where you want the funds to go to. Disclaimer, next. The rest of filling in information was pretty straightforward, so I skipped the rest of it. Um, and you can put your credit card information in. So now we're gonna uh, move some money from an exchange. I use uh, Newton for a lot of mine. They're a little limited on their coins. We're gonna buy some Litecoin this time. And so we're just gonna copy that address and then go over into Newton in my case, but you can do crypto.com, whatever. I already did some because uh, but I needed more in order to make the transfer, so I put another 10 in to make it 20. So you search for your coin. I'm just doing this quickly because this is different for every exchange where you trade and send her off so now we've sent our 20 ish Canadian so you'll see the last one I get into the wallet uh, over to as Litecoin over to the Zelcor wallet so crypto X and we'll copy our address in this is the address we took originally and review transaction obviously double check everything make sure you're doing it all right and we'll withdraw funds. 
Alright, so as you can see our Litecoin has been received and we've also I've also transferred a little bit of BNB over uh, to help with some gas fees for the next step. What we're going to do now is we're going to turn our um, BUSD into Flux on that chain. And it's just playing around with this, trying to see what I can do with it. So I'm going to try and move it over uh, to, and then to buy um, KDA with it. So in here you can choose uh, and search actually for uh, whatever you're doing. So you can put, grab your BUSD, obviously grab the right one, but there won't be any value if you check, pick the wrong one. And then we're going to convert it to Flux. You'll see why later. And this is on BSC. This is going to be a little bit more complicated. It took me a little bit to figure it all out, but it does work. Um, so now we're going to do max for that. And we're going to send this $10 over, and it's going to create 15 units of BSC flux. A little bit of gas, which is why I had to pull that over uh, the BMB. And swap. So the transaction does take a few minutes, so we might skip some of this. I just checked it out just to make sure it, it shows success, so at least we know part of the transaction is done. This part here, I pulled it up just to take a look at it. Uh, it makes it look like you have to do some things like with your MetaMask or something, but there is nothing you have to do. It will go through the process of awaiting the deposit, confirming and exchanging and then sending to you. Again, I'll probably skip some of this, but it does all work out. I just wanted to show you some of the things that happen in case you get concerned. So the whole process took actually about seven and a half, eight minutes. Uh, it's just about to finish up here now. Just so you guys are aware, because obviously if going through this the first time, definitely some concerns can happen. It definitely hung on the awaiting deposit for a little bit, uh, which made me think I had done something wrong. Uh, but it all worked out. So right about now it's going to finish up and say complete. Here we go. So everything's been transferred over and then we'll move on to the next step in a moment. All right, so now we have our Flux BSC and now we're going to head over to apps and go into the Fusion app. This is kind of, it's a bridge. So we're gonna use this to bridge our uh, Flux BSC over to our Flux KDA. And just max that out and send that over. A little difference on the amounts, I presume different prices for each uh, unit of Flux and swap. And now you can see the screen again. So it completed a few um, confirmations and then an exchange and finished in about a minute and a half. So we'll close that up and we'll head back over and add that new Flux KDA to the portfolio. Just gotta add it in here like we did the other ones and nice and easy right there, just click on it. Okay, so as you see, we have our KDA tokens, or Flux KDA now, in our wallet. So things get a little bit weird here. So as you can see, this is kind of a neat feature to the wallet. You can actually have a website up, and then that green link at the very top of the website that you see there uh, links to that site. So it's almost like your MetaMask going in, but it's not done through a browser extension. So what you're seeing me do here now is I have to actually switch this to Chain 2. I'll show that on the thing in a second. Um, so as you can see, gas fees are free. We need to choose which wallet we're using. And then we go up to the top and we'll max out what we're transferring over and then switch it to chain two, chain ID two. I don't know exactly why this has to happen. I'm assuming it's a layer thing or something, but it, and something to do with gas fees possibly. But, um, in order to use the Kdex, it has to be on chain two, as you'll see, I, I should point it out with the mouse in a second here. And uh, so we've process, we've started the process, it's switching over, so there's the chain two thing. So that's why it has to be there in order for the wallet to link with that website for the funds to, or to, for you actually to be able to do the, the transfer from uh, the Flux KDA to actual KDA. 
I'm going to skip through this for a minute. Uh, there's takes a little bit of time, and there's even another step after this that I didn't really realize at first. Um, so I'll show you what took me a while to figure out. So as you're going to see now, the transaction will finish up in about a second. And once I close this off, I will not see the funds yet. Um, I'll be doing some searching, but I'm going to skip ahead and I'll show you uh, what the next step is that we had to do. Okay, so I wanted to quickly break off and show you this. So inside my local drive under users, uh, Zellcor and logs, I was able to pull up this uh, info log. And when you actually go in here, this is the key that you end up needing in the next step. And I'll show you that in a second. But uh, just in a really complicated step, I'm sure there's an easier way. Unfortunately, I could not find out one. Uh, but inside here, you go inside your info logs under your Zellcor folder, uh, under your user ID, and then grab the initial request key, not this one. I tried this one first and it didn't work. So this is the one that you need. Okay, so using that uh, key that we just got, we click on this and then put that key in there and finish it. And that will actually complete the cross-chain transfer. And transfer succeeded. Close that up and switch that to chain two and our funds are there finally. So now we need to connect our wallet. So to the Zellcore one, connect and scroll down. You're going to key in your pin and share the account. So this basically links it. All right, and now you have to choose the wallet that we're going to do the transfer from, just like you do any DEX transfer. And then we're going to flip it so we put our KD on the bottom and pull up our flux. And there you go. So now we're going to max that out, swap it over. I just played around with it and moved my slippage down and stuff. I didn't see the point in paying 5%. And then lowered. And then change the time to one minute and swap. And just like you would on a ledger, you're going to put your pin in here again to review the transaction. This is why I say it's kind of got some similarities to, to a hard wallet. Now you confirm. So the transaction did take a few minutes to complete, so I did putter around a little bit, um, but it did complete. Uh, it took about three, four minutes, so don't be wary. It might have been because of the slippage that I used, but then I ha now have my first few units of KDA. Okay, so that was a lot. I will try and put some timestamps in the video, so if you have to revisit any steps, it makes it easier to navigate. Thank you so much for waiting till the end. Hope this added some value. If it did, or you just think I'm a nice enough guy to deserve a like or subscribe, then thanks. This was a much tougher one, but it uh, was fun to do. A little challenge to the Kadena Hashing family. If I get 250 likes, that's a quarter of the Kadena Hashing family team or community right now, then I will go on camera for the next video. I don't know if that adds any value to anybody, but uh, again, this has been a lot of fun. If you want to see anything in particular, please let me know. And as always, comments and or advice are always appreciated. Uh, this has been a fun experience figuring this stuff out and on the fly and uh, for both the wallets and for video processing and editing. I hope you get some value out of it. Have a great day and I look forward to some of the AMAs today from the Kadena Hashing team.